Alright, uh, welcome to this. I'm going to show you guys how to program, which it, programming can be kind of a useful tool later on in, like, computers. But, um, like, it's, um, if you want to make something like this with buttons and things on it, then that's a whole hell of a lot of work. So I'm just going to tell you that right now. But if you really want to learn it, then okay. And now, the first thing about programming is programming is all just basically a bunch of instructions for the computer, like a checklist of things to do. The computer goes through the checklist and, you know, it does whatever it's told. But the thing is, the computer doesn't know how to do anything on its own. It has to be told exactly how to do it. Now, there's this one way. It takes, like, 20 lines, which is, you know, each line is command. It takes 20 commands for, like, just a simple instruction. But it's, it runs a lot faster than other ways to do it. Um, so we, that's what computers use, but we humans don't like to program in this language, because it's called assembly, um, no one likes to program in it, because it just, it takes forever. So they've made these other, these programs, after they got tired of programming in this one language, that would take, uh, commands in a certain other language, like in this case C++, and then it would convert it into these low-level, uh, commands, as we call them. Now, you see, the, um, now, you can get the compiler, just look up DEVCPP, and you can get, um, from, like, this is where I got it from. And you can then, um, now that you have, once you have that, you can, uh, make programs, and it's just a lot easier. So, we press that, new, source file, or we could just do control N. And, now, there are other languages out there, and each one is specialized. You see? For example, um, there's uh, one that's called Java, which is really good if you want to make a video game. This language isn't so good for video games. Um, but if you want to um, make something to handle like forms that are taken back from a website, you can use this one. I know it's called Python, which is really good. And there's, uh, there's all kinds of languages out there. This one is really good because it gives you a lot of control a lot of options, and it's very efficient. So, um, also, what you can do is, if you want to, um, put an assembly instruction, just press ASM, and this depends, this varies on compiler, and some compilers will do it like this, and then you can put the instructions right in here. Um, mine just happens to be, so you put it in between parentheses, and then you put it in between these quotes. You see? And that's just an example of the kind of control it gives you. Now, just if, after you've uh, typed this stuff in, and I'll explain what this is later, this is where we put our commands. Now, thanks to this instruction right here, number include stdio.h, which is short for standard input output, um, we can, it's already learned quite a lot. Like, for example, how to print things onto the screen. Print F, which means print follow. So we're going to have it print out Hello World. This is a little tradition that got started. That every new, every first program will print out Hello World. Well, all the commands always have to end with the semicolon. Another, and a thing, cool thing you can do, and this goes for most languages, if you put in forward slash forward slash, you can put in a comment. You can put it in, like, after a command, or you can put it, like, on a single line. Or if you have a really long comment, you can put forward slash star stuff, you know, stuff you want to put in, and then star forward slash, and it knows the comment ends at star forward slash. You see? Now, um, you're going to notice that yours highlight things a bit differently. Um, the highlighting doesn't really do anything, like, for example, highlighting this word just to help us out later on, but, um, it doesn't actually change into the code at all. Uh, to do, like, I changed how mine does that, uh, wait, no, that's not it. Uh, I changed how mine does it, um, by doing this, and then I just changed it so that way it would do it like this. Um, don't worry, that's just my preference, you know? So, just don't worry about that. Now, uh, now that we've got that, we're gonna compile it. We need to save it as example, is what I'm gonna call mine. And then, it gave us this error, right down here. Because we didn't follow the rules to this language, it's, um, telling us that it can't compile it. So, now what did we do wrong? Well, we... Didn't, it didn't know what Hello World was. You need to tell it that it's what's called a string by putting in, like, these quotes, you see? 
and here's just a little briefly how you can do it. Um, if you want to do, for example, a quote inside of it, then you put backward slash quote, and then now you can put, it will display a quote onto the screen. And, um, it's going to put this all on one line, and, like, if I put in, like, print f something else, then this is also going to be on the same line. To put, to get to do it, move to the next line, you put backward slash n. If you want to print out a backward flash onto it, you put backward flash, backward flash, which tells it to ignore the next thing. You see? Um, backward flash just does something special. You can do backward flash, uh, sorry, backward flash T, which is for tab, um, there's backward flash zero, but you'll never see that, or not very often anyways. For right now, this is just what you need to know. We'll do compiling it, and then we press this button to run it, and it just did that. You see, it ran, it went through the instruction, print out hello world, it finished, so then it closed itself. You probably never complained before about your computer being too fast. Alright, now, how do we slow this down? Well, there are two methods. There's one way, which you'll understand more on later, but that doesn't teach you as much as this other method could. Um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a variable. Now, a variable is like a file, only you, only you won't actually find it on your desktop anywhere. A variable is, um, you know, it has a name and it has a value. Now, um, when, when, it, let's say I had a variable called message, well, then as it processes through this information, through these uh, commands, it will replace message with the value, because it knows message is a variable. But there's a certain way to get a variable on there. We have to declare it. We have to tell what kind of variable it's going to be. In this case, we'll make it an int, which is short for integer. And an integer is basically, in case you've forgotten, it's, it can be a positive or negative whole number. So we'll, now we can put in the name of one. Let's call it A. So that's, that's just how creative we're being here. And now we're going to put in scanf sent d. Oh, wait, sorry. Percent D and A. Now, what this does is it sets A, it, like, it'll, um, go onto the screen, it'll let you, like, type in something, and it'll set A to wherever it is that you typed in. And it'll get an, a really, it'll make this really big error if you don't put in an integer. If you put in, like, a, a letter or something. But, so, um... Right now, we don't have to worry about that, because we're not stupid enough to do that. At least, hopefully, anyways. So, we've, now that we've done that, um, put back with us in, you know, just put it on the next line. And now we compile it again, because, we, you know, we changed it. And there we go. Now, it'll end as soon as we put in something, like two. And then it's gone. Um, and I'll be sure to put up something for the next tutorial. Uh, but that's all for right now.